everybody, my name is Justina Osowska, at Women Blockchain on Twitter, and I'm here with a very special guest in D.C. Isaiah, how are you doing today? Great! How are you? Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, good to see you. Great panel beforehand. Uh, love to see all the work that you're doing in the space. So why don't you tell everybody um, what you do? Yeah, um, I'm the CEO of uh, Blaze Fire Game and co-founder, um, and we are a licensed digital gaming and career pathway company, um, as long as well as the CEO and co-founder of Appearing Global Institute, which is a micro credentialing company in 120 countries that offers career pathways, what we call micro learning, to individuals who are trying to upskill themselves. Excellent, and we all need that. Right. Um, so this interview is specifically about how is blockchain increasing financial literacy? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think what we're seeing now, what's happening in the world right now is this key skill of understanding budgeting and managing. Um, blockchain allows the ability where everyone can have an open space um, and starting even at an earlier age to be able to do this. We don't have to wait and say, do I take this course in a class? When we look at the worlds of how we're reaching our different markets, TikTok and all those different aspects, blockchain speeds up that process, more important makes it more efficient and effective. Excellent. I totally agree with that. Um, the other question I have, what about when education is gamified? <laughs> when, when education is gamified, is one is more socially engaging. Right. I mean, what we found that students who are involved with gaming are more than likely, 70% more likely, one, to score higher in STEM classes in math and science because they're socially engaged. It's their space. It's where they feel comfortable at. And that's just probably one of the biggest advantages. Studies have shown that. More importantly, those who, it brings out those who may be introverts, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in that space in gaming and having it gamified, it allows them to be bring out that side as an extrovert without even realizing they're doing it. Wow, that's amazing. So how do you think the combination of both is going to take finan financial literacy forward? Uh, here's the biggest advantage we see. One of the companies that we also own is called My Kid Biz Financial Literacy Program. And what we've done, um, there's a game out there called the NFL Visa Financial Football, which also has a soccer and also a baseball component where it's ask students you know, at different levels, rookie, pro, you know, level Hall of Famer, about what is a bond, and, and, and if you don't call the right play, you'll get sacked, but if you call the right play, you'll score many yards. So the gamification piece is helping other kids understand the balance of, this is, if I make a decision about understanding what is a debit card and why, what is a credit rating, um, it'll help them sustainable in their lives, long-term sustainability. And you and in your previous answer, you also mentioned that you the the retention rate in their mind is higher than seventy percent rate. Can you go into that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. What what we found a research study have shown one not only is the retention rate around because they can connect it to what they're doing in their everyday lives. For example, if they see it in the gaming aspect, say if they're making a move inside of a game, they remember that move in the game. They're now correlating that with their how do I do this in a math step. A geometry step weird you know I was able to experience that with my son while he was also taking Chinese he was also playing a game in, on his online class where he could somehow connect what he was learning his Chinese math with his gaming moves on Fortnite Wow and, and it, it was the weirdest thing we had ever seen so I've seen it firsthand now it's valid of course what he's doing now but I think what, they, what he did and I asked him I said Michael how are you getting this math right on Chinese he said, Dad, it was simple. I was counting the steps of what it was doing here when I was playing Fortnite. And I said, well, if it did that and take that divided by that, then when I shot the guy over here, I broke it down the same way in Chinese math. We'll take this step. And when I missed a step, I messed up on the game. When I missed a step, I messed up on the math problem. I said, I don't know how you figured that out, but the answer is correct. So I think I, we, we're not giving our kids credit of what they're actually learning. Right? Realizing that they came out of the womb, basically, already with technology in their hands. Mm. So our way of skilling now teachers, guys, you know, as we talk about this, right? You guys are like Canada and all these areas. We have to think about there's a new way of what I call reimagining the delivery of education. I agree with you on that because you know what? 
that immersion is how people really learn because it affects your memory differently. Yes. So there's a physical aspect to what you're mm -hmm. doing and not just you doing it on a piece of paper or you taking it like with audio. The more senses that are involved, the more it's ingrained in your memory. And you said the word visual. Yes. The visual learning aspect, I think that's what blockchain and everything is doing now even more so. The visual learning aspect is now taking over even more so than we've ever probably ever seen it, ever in history. I would say also, and the next step using the metaverse, metaverse could be multi-sensory learning. It is. It is. The engagement there. We're back to what we talked about earlier, yes. right? You're talking about, I can take an avatar and make it really cool about learning. I can really, I can be, you know, we talked about it earlier, I can be this anonymous person, but more importantly, anonymous person, I can be whoever I want to be, but I'm actually engaged. And I think our teachers, our educators are going to have to start seeing that. Our, our workforce, corporate America and everyone, it's a slow, it's a slow churn, but it's, it's, it's here to stay. I also heard that part of memory is spatial, so you mentioned something mm -hmm. about your son, and right. memory is actually, hum the way humans evolved over time, mm -hmm. uh, we have external memory versus, uh, sorry, internal memory versus Precisely. now we're using external. We've externalized with hard drives, with external, like you want to know something, <laughs> no one remembers it, but you can go on Google and find out in, in seconds. But whenever you're engaging your senses, it goes into your long-term memory. And, and we're remembering something that we view as important. Let's, let's take it something as simple as this. We probably can't remember our phone number for our family members because we have it saved as a favorite That's on right. our phones, right? That's right. But somehow, Michael was able to remember that every step that I made in that game, he correlated that to his, his, his math in Chinese. It, and somehow, it was a different type of memory. So I say, it's almost like we want to remember what we want to remember. That true, and that, to add to your point, I, I read a couple books about memory. One of the things that they say is engaging both sides of your brain. That is correct. So if you engage like a sense like walking and space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it goes into your deeper memory. Or right. let's say like what you're what he's saying about there's a response in the game that could be emotional. That also is another sense, right? right. So right. now you're like visual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, potentially, even they say people who are in avatars, they think it's so real, they think they're doing the They move. think they're in it. Right? They're like, I'm this person. For exactly. Real. And technically they are, right? But they were like, I'm this person. And they were able to go into another world that really allows them to let them be them. I always call it, it's allowing them to be brand me. And that's their world. And as long as we, I always share with parents, don't have them run away from gaming, seek to understand what's going on. I mean, look, there are over 700 colleges and universities that offer full gaming scholarships. Why would you turn your kid away from that? The job is too plentiful out there. It's a plentiful offer in your careers. Memory, you're correct. You're dead on with what, how it's engaging both sides. We've never had that. What do we say? You either learn to left, bring left yeah. side or right side. Right. We're in the world now where blockchain and metaverse and all that now changes all that. And mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Actually, I don't know if you know this, but back before, when memory was more uh, uh, internal, they used storytelling to remember things, mm -hmm. and they used right. the, another thing that they used for memory was memory palaces, which yeah. was correlated to space. Right, right. You know, so yeah, absolutely. So back then, so I was telling my kids, I said, listen, don't try to memorize that math problem stuff. Work through it. But the difference is, as much as I'm saying don't do that, they all, they're almost like fighting against it, saying, no, Dad, remember, when you taught us to play chess, you said, think these 13 moves ahead or this 18 moves ahead. You were basically telling us to memorize the steps. Mm. So I was like, oh, right? <laughs> they were like, so why are you, you can't change it on understanding the steps in education? Mm. So. Well, I think change takes time as well. It does. Right? So it's not like you go from A to Z like this. Right. That right. It's also like, but what you said I think is important here is the how did the problem solving in one case help in the mm -hmm. other, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like transferable skills. How do you transfer, you know, from this to this? So it's like how come this, you think you're just, right. uh, you think you're just studying, let's say, um, how to install a blockchain wallet and going through the steps, but that makes that teaches you more about risk, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's something you can transfer. And, and a risk that you're willing to take, knowing that it's not going to be the end of the world. You see, he was like, "Oh, I made the wrong moves in the gaming move." He was like, "Oh, I got killed." 
Well, wait a minute. But then he correlated that was, if I missed this step in math, I got a bad grade. So again, the correlation was unreal. I've never figured it out, don't want to figure it out. He's doing well on it. I was like, if you got it, if you like it, I love it. Because he came up with an A. I'm happy. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your absolutely. time today. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, I'll see you at the rest of the conference. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes.